You came from, you immigrated from Mexico. Yeah, I, I came from Mexico when I was 15 years old. Uh -huh. Right now, I'm 33. But um, first, when I came to this country, well, um, I guess life was perfect because I got a job, I got everything. Uh, but, um, you know, since I started meeting more people, they introduced me to uh, drugs. Drugs. Oh, so it was also yes, drugs for drug you. problems, well, alcohol. Uh, what kind of drugs? Uh, um, Fentanyl? Mess? Crystal, crystal, crystal. I never, I never tried uh, um, fentanyl, but I, I was really hooked to meth. You know, methamphetamine. Seems like so. It's, I hear yeah. that a lot these days. Um, it seems that people are really getting hooked on meth. Um, so, so tell us. I mean, how did you? Yeah, I mean, because I, you, you know that it doesn't. That, that addiction, it just doesn't happen overnight. It kind of yeah, starts slowly, and all of a sudden, you know that you're hooked. Tell us. Um, how, yeah, when did you know what happened? First of all, I started. You know, at some party, I, I was drunk, okay. and one friend introduced me to meth. By um, you know, sniffing it, so I tried it once, then the second, third, fourth. You and take then, it verbal, like uh, verbal, like eat it or no, no. do? You, oh, you snort it. Yeah. Okay. That's how I start everything, and then, um, after doing it for like a year, my body want, wanted more, you know, more oh, and more. Okay. So I started smoke, smoking it, smoking it in a pipe. So for there, I was there hooked for like six years. So it. were you were you working? Um, I was I was working um, before I used to. What was uh, your job? Uh, yeah, I, was, I used to uh, do car alarm systems, car alarm systems. sound systems, and everything. So you kept your job. So you were functioning. As, yeah, I was as still, a user. I was, I was still working. Besides, since I was using the drug, I couldn't sleep, so I got a, a nighttime job. So I was to work night and day. You oh. couldn't sleep because of meth, right? yeah. because it kept and, you and being then, high, right? Yeah, for like I was I was like that for six six years. And then um, I thought I could control it, but I guess not because, I, you know, I started getting my mood. I was getting angry to customers oh. sometimes. I wasn't doing the job right anymore. So it affected a lot in my, in, my, in my work. So my boss got to, you know, kick me out. Oh. So, so it, mm -hmm. initially you thought that you could control it recreationally, right? Yes, you can just that's, enjoy that's, it every once in a while, but, yes, but later it took you, you know, it took over. over. Yeah, and then my boss had to, you know, fire me. After there, um, I met a couple of people. Then I st we started, you know, stealing cars just to get, cars. get money for drug. And then um, I was like that for uh, I, I was I was homeless for like uh, eight years. Eight years. Eight years. And you were still using. Yeah, I was still homeless. using it. I was still using it. I mean, did you have family here? Um, uh, yeah, I have like actually I have like fourteen brothers and sisters. Fourteen the brothers. brothers. Yeah. Wow. I mean, did they try? Did, they did, try so hard to make me change. Uh, they came to look for me like most every day. I I hide from them. I didn't want them to see me, but um, my sister, everything, everybody, I, even myself. Um, I wanted to change so bad. Um, sometimes, I. I sit down nights nice crying uh -huh. to find a way out, uh -huh. and I couldn't. Uh -huh. I tried so hard. I tried so, so many, so many times. I trying to quit by myself. I couldn't. Uh -huh. I couldn't. And uh, because fentanyl, I mean, meth made you feel that good, huh? Uh, yeah. First, it makes you feel good, but after, it makes you feel, you know, depression. Depression goes along with it, like depression. depression yeah. So you keep on taking it to get out of depression too yeah yeah i i, I kept uh, taking it taking it i'm just but, trying to understand the something site, yeah. something that, that I, I noticed is is the more you consume it the more you you you, you get, fall down uh, you and fall how down. often were you using i was <clears throat> i was i was smoking every i would say every 20 minutes every, every 20, 20 minutes every 20 minutes all day all day all day and then and then you did you, were you able to fall asleep eventually uh, or? Uh, yeah i was like for like two hours for a week like two I was, hours a week yeah a week it was no sleeping at all, actually. So it, it's a kind of like an energy booster, right? Because yes. I heard I hear these like entertainers who take it, you know, and they said they could clean the house, you know, with the, the with that energy that I heard about. In the beginning, those. yeah. But after after it, it takes over your life and it destroys you. So like, where was that? When was that yeah. moment? When was that moment where you said no more? Uh, the moment actually. That's when uh, one day I walk because I used to stay on South Central. Mm. So you fell into homelessness first, right? Uh, yeah, I was I was homeless okay. back then. But uh, one day, since since I had I didn't believe in anything, I don't believe in God before. So, so so many times I blame myself for the situation I was, and I I want to get out so bad, but I couldn't. I didn't know how to. So one day, uh, I um well back then. Something made me walk that I know that it was God who made me walk and take me to 
all the way to Olympic. I walk all the way to Slauson to Olympic. Uh -huh. I didn't know what was the reason uh -huh. why I was walking. But you just walk. Yeah, I just was walking. After there, I got so tired. I didn't have no more drug with me. I didn't have no food. I had nothing. So actually, I I, I was in front of a fire table mission church. Uh huh. So I stayed there. I slept there for a night. The next day, I was walking by the church. I didn't know it was a church by then. But I walked in there and I bumped to a guy that he offered me food. And he told me, would you like some food? So he gave me food. And then, I, and then the next day, I went back to get food again. But in my way back to, because I have another brother that was with me too. He was uh -huh. walk, he walked with me, and uh, but he was more. Um, the drug was taking him more like mental. He had okay. mental problems okay. already. So he's homeless too. Uh, yeah, he was Your homeless person, too, right. but his situation was a uh, mental problem already. He wasn't thinking straight no more. Yeah. So by the time I went back with him and and leave the food with him so we can eat, I found a tray. Mm -hmm. So when I found the tray and it says. If I, I get baptized and repent, then Jesus will give me a new life. Oh, it, so I it, never, it was I never, there. I never knew about Jesus. So I turned around and I saw, I saw the church. It says Jesus on top of it. Mm. So, but I knew that tray was left there for me. Yeah. Uh huh. So I told my brother, wait for me here. I'm, I'll be back. So I run to the church back. I knock the door. My pastor opened the door and and asked me, well, "Can I help you?" And I, I, I remember telling him. I need to get baptized. I want to get baptized. Did I remember it was a Sunday, and then mm -hmm. and then they have a service going on. So she told me come in. I went inside. They prayed for me. Since that day, all the anxiety I feel my body. My body wanted drug all the time. Stop. Oh, it's stopped. really completely stop. Wow. So that that's day, great. That, that, that's that, a great that, testimony. That, that day, that day, <laughs> that day, I feel so much peace. And I remember going back to my brother. I told my brother, you know what? Come follow me. This is the place we need to be. And then, but first of all, I didn't believe in any any spiritual things. I didn't believe in you nothing. Didn't. You were an atheist. Yes, but the what God made me feel that day through through through, through the prayer and everything it was so amazing. It was so powerful. It was very hard to explain, but it's so peaceful, peaceful. So one night another, my addiction stopped completely. Everything. You didn't crave it at all. Not at all. Just overnight. <laughs> overnight. But uh, on, on the first month, I would, got, I would get like nightmares, really bad. Nightmares. Nightmares. Uh -huh. nightmares. Uh -huh. They attack me so hard. What kind of nightmares were like, they? Like, I, 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 this, uh, I would see these like demons trying to like punch me, drag me. Uh -huh. So I, I was very scared to fall asleep. But then um, I started reading the Bible. Oh, okay. So I, I got the Bible all the time with me. I remember sleeping at nighttime. Uh, my pastor gave me give me a bed, but I I didn't want to sleep in the bed in the room because I was afraid. Yeah. So I I sleep in the living room where the cross was and with the, my Bible all the time with my Bible all the time sleeping with the Bible. So it's amazing how how yeah. how I think so. That's the yeah. only way, and and I can tell you, right now when we go to ski road and I see people with the same problem. Yeah. I would love to drag him and drag him to take him to church with me, but I can't. Only the way I can do it is by praying for them, by asking God to, to help them. The same way he helped me, not only me, um, my other brother, my youngest brother. That's, you, that's your brother over there, and, too? Uh, brother in Christ. <laughs> but uh, also I found him in the street, too, the same problem, uh -huh. addictions. And uh, I have another, like, seven brothers at church, the same problem, alcohol, addiction. And the same thing, I told them, follow me, come, join join the family, because we are family, we live together. Mm -hmm. So we're helping each other, and that's the only way I see people change. Mm 